Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NCAA tournament in Raleigh, North Carolina. Just a few details to go over before we get started with the uh, Butler student athletes this morning. First of all, the satellite coordinates for the press conferences, SES-3 slash K02B is in boy. That's SES-3 slash K02B is in boy. I've been asked to tell you that mobile device video recordings, including live streaming and Periscope of today's press conferences are not permitted. Would also like to make sure that everybody has their phones turned off. You're not allowed to take flash photography. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for us to get a microphone to you. Once you have a microphone uh, for this first press conference, please give us your name and your affiliation. With that said, we're now ready to start the press conference for the Butler student athletes, and we'll go ahead and open the floor up for questions. We get one to Aaron over here. Thank you. Aaron Beard with the AP. Um, this is for any player. You, you guys have been in the tournament several years. This is not a new thing for you guys. What's the experience like, and is it any different this year as opposed to any any other time? Austin, could you answer that first? Uh, you know, uh, this one. You know, it's it's really not much different. Uh, you know, coming into it, you know, there's the question of us being on the bubble, but uh, you know. We weren't really worried about that or thinking about that. You know, we were just focus, focusing on us as a team. And, you know, I think it, it paid its dues. You know, we, we were ready and, you know, our name was called. And so we're ready to, you know, go out there and show everyone what we're capable of. Kellen, could you please answer that one? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's just a wonderful experience that we have uh, generally just coming to the, this tournament at the end. Um, I think that, you know, it's a special one in this year that uh, we were able to come overcome some adversity early on in the conference season being three and six and turn it around. So um, I think it's a special one just like they always are. Go ahead, Aaron. To follow up, um, Roosevelt, you can take this. Is there an advantage to having tournament experience, though, in the sense that having a team that a lot of guys have been there before as opposed to, I think Texas Tech hasn't been there since 2007. Um, yeah, I think there's somewhat an advantage. I can remember from my sophomore year, my first time playing the NCAA tournament, I was very nervous. I didn't know what to expect, what the atmosphere and things like that was. But uh, last year, I was kind of more focused, more uh, confidence and more calm throughout the tournament. So I think that kind of has an effect on it, but it's not going to uh, affect the outcome of the game. You still got to come out ready to play. Other questions for the student athletes? Aaron? I'll just go again. Um, for any of the players, this is, Tyler Lewis has been here in this building before, played here two years. But just have you guys talked with him much about being back here in, at NC State? Um, Austin, could you answer that, please? Uh, you know, yeah, Tyler, uh, we knew, um, you know, right after our name was called and where they told us we were going to be playing that, you know, Tyler uh, played here before and that this, you know, he's very familiar with this gym. So, you know, we were happy for him to be able to come back home. You know, for him, I think it was hard for him to leave, you know, his his state. So him being able to come back to it, you know, it's pretty cool for him and, a, you know, a really cool experience, you know, not only, you know, being back in your hometown, but in the NCAA tournament. So obviously we're very happy for him and, uh, you know, we got you know other business to take care of too. So, any other questions? Can we get the microphone to Kip, Daniel? Yeah, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, let me ask Roosevelt. Butler's reputation in the tournament, well earned. You've had a lot of you know long runs, uh, big upsets. Uh, where do, do you feel you guys are are more of a a target on you now because you've established yourself in the tournament over the years? Um, no, I don't really think that we're much of a target because I still feel like there's people that doubt us about our game whenever we come in the NCAA tournament. You know, every year we come in, we're always picked or choose to lose our game. So we know we got to come out ready to play and uh, ready to beat the team we play and uh, shock the media with uh, how we play against the teams that uh, we, go, we go up against. So I really don't feel like that uh, we have a target on our back, really. Other questions? Going once, twice, 
All right, gentlemen, that's all we need. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Uh, Coach Holtman will be here at 1135. that in your notes? This is great. <laughs> A request for the satellite board. See? See, I'm helping you out with satellite board. Seems fine. No, I think good. Been Jean. Staying busy. Barring them in. It's one of the things they do it just the right, right amount of time. If it was more consistent, I'd probably be like, yeah, yeah, it's too much time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Plus, see, I got an eight-year-old now, and he thinks it's cool, so we got that. If you don't count date, date makes nine. Nice. <laughs> no. Well, at eleven thirty-five, the coach starts, okay. and the next, and then but um, but why can't Hampton starts at twelve oh five? Okay, so the last one was thirteen. Eleven thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. Minute. You're welcome.
We are now ready to continue with the Butler press conference. At this time, we'd like for the head coach to make an opening statement. Well, certainly it's, uh, it's great to be in Raleigh, uh, great to be a part of this, the best, uh, the best tournament in the world. Uh, I think our guys uh, believe that, we believe that, we're excited about tomorrow, and we know we're playing a terrific team in Texas Tech. Coach Smith's uh, group is, I think, really good and talented and athletic, and obviously um, got the utmost respect for Coach Smith and, and uh, his program. So. They've had a tremendous year, and uh, we're excited about the challenge. Okay, we'll now open the floor up for questions. Can we get a mic up here, Daniel? Yes, uh, Coach Holtman, you're a, you're a native Kentuckian, and, and Tubby Smith obviously had great success uh, with the Wildcats there. Do you, do you, uh, have you cross paths with him at all, and were you a, were you a uh, Tubby Smith and Kentucky fan growing up? You know, uh, Tubby Smith is my mom's uh, second favorite basketball coach. Um, I think she and, and she and he's uh, he's her first. Uh, he's her favorite. Um, uh, you know, Kentucky basketball coach. She she uh, has great. I think respect. Anybody that that's has been around Coach Smith, I think, has great respect and admiration for um, who he is. And I have not got a chance to spend a whole lot of time with him. In Puerto Rico, we crossed paths a little bit and had, had a conversation. But, um, you know, my mom is a lifelong Kentucky fan, as is my family. And uh, she still listens to uh, every single Kentucky game. As a matter of fact, if, if Butler and Kentucky are playing at the same time, she'll watch Butler and listen to Kentucky. Um, so she's got a great... Uh, as does my family, great respect for Coach Smith, as do I. Other questions? Can we get a mic to Kip? Yeah, Chris, uh, Kip Coons from the Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, can you tell us uh, what kind of a role Tyler Lewis has, has played for you this year, given that he's back in his former home, home building? Sure, sure. Yeah, he's, been, he's obviously been an important part of, of our team this year, and uh, really has been instrumental in some um, some very important wins for us, uh, dating back uh, to the non-conference and into the conference. Um, you know, we've had great contributions. Obviously, Tyler played exceptionally well um, against Purdue. Uh, played very well uh, in in Puerto Rico. Uh, had some injury issues. Had a had a concussion issue in the middle of conference play, but since has returned and really given us. Uh, some, some really important and valuable minutes. Um, you know, the, our Seton Hall game at home, he came in and gave us some life when we really needed it. So he's been an important part of, of an NCAA tournament team, and um, I know he's excited to be back here in his hometown. Other questions for Coach? Can we give Kip another one? Yeah, Kip Coons again from the Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, Chris, uh, Butler has had excellent runs in the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, two Final Fours back-to-back, -back and, and you seem always to be making noise somewhere. Uh, does that put a target on your back as a, you know, as a mid-major, but everybody knows you and, and, and expects big things from you this time of year? Sure. Well, I think, you know, I think the move to the Big East, I think the, the mid-major moniker's probably fallen off uh, uh, as soon as we made that move, even, even uh, maybe before so. Um, I think our league is outstanding, and I think that has prepared us well. Listen, I, I've said this a number of times, and I've been reminded about this, um, and I've, I've given Brad credit for it. And uh, You know, he texts me on every selection, the last two selection Sundays, um, you know, well before Selection Sunday and says, do, you know, and is, reminds me, do not ever take this uh, for granted, uh, Coach Stevens, that is. And uh, I, I think that, you know, this is, this is a party that everybody wants to get an invite to, and everybody wants to get an invite to. And when you don't get an invite, you're sour uh, for months. And uh, when you do get an invite, um, you want to cherish every moment and embrace every moment and have fun with it, and you're – hungry as can be to get back um, and to get another invite. So 
Uh, I think our guys have a great appreciation for, for how hard. Listen, I, as I've said, we're two years removed from 4-14 four and 14, uh, in the Big East in our first year, and about as far off from the bubble as you can get. So um, uh, we're excited about this. We know we're playing a tremendous team, um, and we, we hope we, we, we can play well and um, live to fight another day. Let's go up front, Dan. Coach, we're, we're, uh, we're kind of used to Butler teams in the past for their, for their lockdown defense. You know, this team has been a very efficient offensively. What has Butler done well on those occasions when you have been exceptional defensively? Well, it's, 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 David, it's really helped us win games. Let's be honest, it's, it's been a real struggle for, th for us this year. You know, we went from being an elite team defensively last year um, to much better offensively this year, or, or better offensively. Um, and have we have when we've struggled uh, the other day, when we struggled, we struggled on both ends. But our defense has to be considerably better than what it was the other night. Fortunately, we've had stretches uh, down the stretch when we were seven and two, when our defense was was good. And in some cases, our defense uh, won the game for us. Um, that has to be what we're about. Um, and. Uh, you know, that's, I think, certainly on our guys' minds. It's been our, on our guys' minds in practice. And we'll see how we're playing a very good offensive team. This Texas Tech team is top 30 in the country in offensive efficiency. So they're very good. It's going to be a great challenge uh, for us defensively. Go ahead. Also, what uh, do you, um, uh, do the players, have, have they developed a comfort level with going back and forth from man to man and zone? I mean, you've had, you know, you've had good and bad with, with both defenses. I sure. mean, how, how do they process? Because changing defenses obviously can really disrupt an opponent's offense because they're not quite sure what you're going to do next. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's – uh, we've had to do that on some occasions for, for various uh, reasons. We've had trouble at times uh, with certain actions. I don't want to get too specifics uh, that, that have, that have uh, forced us to play some zone. And we've been very good in zone at times. And – uh, but our entire defensive system just needs to, you know, it's improved over the last month and a half. But, um, you know, our entire system from our baseline underneath defense to our zone defense to our man-to-man -man defense um, ne really needs to be on point tomorrow. Any other questions for Coach? All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you guys. The next press conference will begin at 12.05 with the Hampton student athletes.
turned out that some graphic artist made this wonderful thing and no one ever saw it to see if it was functional. They just said, that is beautiful. <laughs> That's right. Let's do that. And, and right now somebody is every, – every single site is going through the exact same thing where they went, gosh, that doesn't work very well, does it? I'm coming. I am. I am. I'm i got to pick this one up, though. We can't let the butler guy get into the Hampton bag because then, then they'd all spin out of control.
on the button, I'm sure. How are you? We should be starting back up in about two or three minutes here with the Hampton student athletes just to go over everything once again very quickly. The satellite coordinates for the press conferences is SES-3 slash K zero two B is in boy. That's S E S dash three slash K zero two B is in boy. We'd like to remind you that mobile device midi video recordings, including live streaming and periscope of today's press conferences are not permitted. We'd also like you to turn off your phones, please. We'd like to remind you there is no flash photography. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait till we get a microphone to you. Once you have the microphone today, if you could please give us your name and affiliation, we would appreciate that. Again, we will have the Hampton student athletes here for 15 minutes, and uh, then the coach will follow at approximately 12:20. The locker room is open during the corresponding time that we're up here, so if you would like to talk to someone else, that's where you can reach them.
We are now ready to begin the press conference with the Hampton student athletes. At this time, we'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for us to get you a microphone. Can we start on the aisle right there? Hey, Reggie. I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about transitioning to, from the off guard to the point coming into the season, what, what it took for you. Um, it took a lot of confidence in my teammates, you know, um, changing some plays around and it was more fitting for me running point and getting some guys involved. But basically my teammates, you know, they had confidence that I can do it. Coaches had confidence and we pretty much, you know, it was a bumpy start from the start, but um, we got it going. Okay, follow up. Yeah, I was going to, you sort of touched on it at the end there. Did it take some time and when, when was it that you felt most comfortable? Um, I think I probably most felt comfortable with it around uh, December, January time, once I start pretty much getting a feel for what guys like the ball on the court. I think that was the hardest thing, you know, finding to make sure I was getting other people's shots because you sometimes forget about that coming from shooting guard to point guard that uh, your job is mainly to get guys the easiest looks as possible. We can get one in the middle here. Norm Wood from the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Quentin, have you had a chance to reconnect with Darius Thompson at all? And the guys traded texts or anything, or were you guys that tight? Uh, yeah, Darius is like my brother. He texts me right after the we found out who we were gonna play, and uh, we kind of just been texting back and forth, uh, kind of enjoying the experience because it's kind of bringing us uh, a lot back closer. Another question? How would you, yeah, how would you guys, how would you characterize your relationship? Is, is he somebody that you've kept up with since you've been at HU and he's been at UVA, or is this kind of just an opportunity to, to reunite? Nah, he's, he's really like my little brother. I mean, we work out in the summer because I go back to Nashville and he's from Murfreesboro. So, I mean, we talk all the time still. It's just a lot more fun and exciting because we're going to play each other, especially us transferring, both, both of us transferring from Tennessee. We can go up front to Doug. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times. Brian, could you talk about the team's reaction to playing Virginia when, you, when it went up on the board, and did you think it was a possibility ahead of time? Um, we, we definitely thought it was a possibility at the, uh, ahead of time, but we were definitely excited about it. You know, it was, it was definitely something we was looking forward to. Any other questions? Right behind you there. Brian, um, this being uh, a return trip for you guys, how much does having been here just help for stuff like this and <laughs> just, you know, preparation and everything? Uh, definitely, you know, keeps us, you know, we're definitely a lot more calm, you know, than we were before, you know. First time I came up here, I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you. But um, it's definitely, you know, a better feeling coming up here again. Let's go up front here. Whitey Reed from the Daily Progress in Charlottesville. This is for all you guys. You know, 16 seeds haven't had any success against the, the number one seeds historically. How, how do you guys approach that mentally? Brian, could you answer that first? Uh, mentally, we just, you know, focus on what we do best, and we're just going to come out there and play our best ability. Quentin, how do you feel about that? Um, I feel like this year anyone could be upset, honestly. Um, if you look at n the number of number ones this year that have fallen, I feel like – you know, March Madness, if you come to play and you're ready, I feel like anything could happen. And if you if you look at a lot of places, especially ESPN, they're saying this could be the year for uh, a number 16 to upset a number one. So, I mean, we just got to come to play and be prepared and focused. Reggie, is there anything to add? Uh, pretty much backing up on Q and Brian said, you know, uh, this year the most, I think it's been the most losses for combined number one teams ever in NCAA history. So. That kind of goes to show you that it's kind of up in the air lead, even though they are number one seed and we are a 16 seed. Okay, can we get one to Norm right there back behind you, Eric? Hi, Brian. David Teal from the, from the Daily Press. You mentioned being nervous last year and more relaxed this year. Do you guys kind of take your cue uh, fr from Coach? He seemed so relaxed last year, even when you guys were getting ready to play Kentucky. And he kind of became a, a, a national star, but just just following his lead. Uh, yeah, we definitely you know feed off the vibe you know of our head coach you know, but we also have you know a great bond with that team. So I mean, like we all talk you know what I'm saying we all have like a 
a relaxed mindset about it. You know, we all have confidence in each other and, it, you know, each one of our, you know, different abilities. So, yeah, definitely. Okay. Up front again. Hi, this is for Quentin. Um, your, your dad was obviously a big star in, in his day. Has he been any kind of a, a sounding board for you, especially now going in here to March Madness? Um, he doesn't do too much. He kind of just tells me, you know, uh, you know what to do. Kind of tells me a little bit about the scout and uh, just prepares me mentally. Just be ready. And he always tells me at the end of the day, it's just basketball. So you just got to come ready to play. Let's go uh, back. I, I'm assuming you don't wear a bandaid like like your dad, or do, do you have any superstitions like that? Um, no, nah, I only wear a bandaid if I get hurt or something like that. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've been starting like second half part of the season. I've been wearing a headband ever since. So I guess that's my new swag or whatever. Any other question? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much and good luck tomorrow. Coach Joyner is due in at 12.20, so about seven minutes. Yes. No, no, you're not you. <laughs> oh,
We are now ready to begin the coaches part of the Hampton University press conference. And at this time, we'd like to ask Coach Joyner to please make an opening statement. Uh, first of all, I mean, we, we're happy to be back. You know, uh, um, uh, I think we have a, a, a tough team. Uh, we understand that we got a tough task in he, ahead of us against a, a Virginia team that was that that we understand is strong defensively and uh, and actually scoring the ball well also. But you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, if you want to make history, you got to put yourself in position to do so, and and we've earned our way to do that. So tomorrow we're going to come out and fight as hard as we can, and then let the chips fall where they may from there. All right, let's go ahead and open up with Doug here. Doug Daddy with the Roanoke Times. When you talk about make history, how much have you talked to, to your team about the opportunity to be the first 16 seed to be the number one? Well, you know what? That once you get to this point, you you could either embrace it or you can make it the elephant in the room. Uh, we've embraced it. You know, we've talked about it. We've talked about the feeling that we could have if we're able to do it. Uh, we also talked about that it's it's easier said than done. You know, you got to go out there and you have to be able to perform because Virginia's gonna perform. So, you know, we've talked about it, and, and we're going to go out and, and see what we can do to try to make, make things happen. David on the aisle. Hey, Bill. What's up, Dave? <laughs> you mentioned it's nice, nice to be back. How satisfying is it to you and, and the program to have built upon last season, to, to go through the MEAC, to win the regular season, follow it up with the tournament championship, and then to, to be back on this stage? You know, that, that's a great question because people were asking, you know, why were we so excited, you know, when we when we won the game or when we felt like we had won the game. And, you know, I, I probably was more probably was more excited than anybody, you know, but I don't think a lot of people really put thought into that. We're a one big league, you know, uh, and uh, schools in bigger conferences, they they play their regular season to kind of assure themselves a bid and then they can relax and go, let's, if, if, we, if we don't know that we're a one seed or a two seed, let's go try to improve on that bid in our conference tournament. Uh, we're in a situation where we can go 16 and 0 and one slip up, you know, and we don't, we don't get the goal that we, that the ultimate goal that, that we put out there and that was to make the NCAA tournament. So to be able to go uh, uh, lead our conference from wire to wire basically, uh, uh, get the first goal that we went after, which was a regular season, which assured us an NIT bid, but at the end of the day, we didn't want to play for three letters, we wanted to play for four. You know, and then to go out and finish the job and get to the NCAA tournament, man, it's, it's, it was special for all of us. And, 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 and the Hampton alum and community and 757 who root for us and so on. And that, you know, it was, it's a great question. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heck of a feeling. You know, and if you haven't been a part of it, you probably wouldn't understand it. And then you guys took such a relaxed approach, you especially last year uh, when you went, went to play undefeated Kentucky. Are you taking a, a similar approach this season? Uh, you, yeah, we are. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way we are. I mean, I, and, and I can use you as an example. You've been in our practices and things before. You know, we, we're about as loose as you can get, you know, uh, uh, and, and we teeter that line of what people would think is, is, is is whether we're focusing or not, but really that's how we focus. You know, I want them to go in, clear a mind and clear a body, but understand the, the task that, at, that's at hand and then go out and fight to get it. So yeah, we we are taking a similar approach, but you know, we understand that, that Virginia is a different team. They're a different type of animal, especially with their defense and the way that they pay attention to detail to things. And uh, you know, again, we, we're gonna go out and fight for it. Let's go back up front to Doug. A lot of us saw your celebration on uh, replays on ESPN and the like. Have you, how much have you watched it? And uh, is that the wi wildest you've ever been after a game? Yeah, I, I think it is the wildest I've ever been after a game. I, I, like I said, I, I am an energetic guy. I think, you know, I, I, an emotional guy. But a lot of times I'm very subdued, especially when I'm on the sidelines. I think I, I hit a moment where it hit me that, you know what, y'all going back to back, and it's, and it's something special. It's something that y'all talked about, you know, all year. And, again, I was happy uh, uh, for my staff, for the, for the players. For the, I mean, again, the pressure that you're up under to, to not to play the regular season. You know, we really play our – again, we play our regular season for seeding. You, you want to play three games instead of four or five. But the, the pressure to have to go in and, and know that you have to win the conference tournament, you know, to make things happen, again, it was something special. Other questions for Coach Joyner? 
Dave, right behind you there. Thank you. Todd Divers from the Washington Times. Mm -hmm. One of the notable things about Virginia's defense is their post trap. What's important when handling that? And what have you seen when you look at that on film? Uh, uh, the first thing to be able to do is be able to handle it without turning the ball over and understand where the trap is coming from, who's trapping, and, 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 and how we want to rotate so that we can get in eyesight so the guy can make a good pass. You know, uh, our posts are not as big as, as, as you probably the posts that they wear. Well, I know they're not as big as the posts that they play against throughout the year. So the trap it could tend to be more effective. So we want to make sure that not it, more than just dealing with the trap, make sure that we got guys in areas that we, that we have releases so that we can use that to our advantage, you know, where we can move the ball around and hopefully get a wide open shot on the backside of the defense. Okay. Let's get David and then we'll get Doug next. Buck, what have, you, what have been your impressions on video, both offensively and defensively, of Malcolm Brogdon? He's good. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's a very good ball player. Uh, again, at, at his size, sometimes we, I mean, we, may, we may see power forwards and centers, you know, at his size. You know, but uh, he, he's, he's a very heady ball player. He makes the jump shot. He's a heck of a defender. Uh, he can put the ball on the floor and score in different ways. Uh, you know, he's a guy that we're not going to be able to relax on. And, uh, again, it's going to be tough to try to defend him individually because we, it's some things that he could do that we may need more people. So when you need more people to defend him, it could open up something else. But, you know, we're going to try to, we're gonna try to do a few things and, you know, say a few prayers that maybe it's, he's just off tonight, you know. And, it, and if that's the case, then, you, you know, that's another reason that you could have a chance. Let's go back up front. A lot of schools have, have benefited from D1 transfers. Could you talk about what your philosophy has been? Have you been any more uh, aware of that possibility from year to year? Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to in, in, in today's culture of college basketball because uh, we don't get the, at our level, we don't get the same freshmen. You know, so you, you, don't, you basically don't want to go where you're playing boys against men. You know, and sometimes that happens. Uh, again, when you are, uh, I do believe in developing young talent, and I think that the, I, I would like the majority of my team to be high school freshmen, but, but you do have to add the right pieces at certain positions, and I think you need transfers today uh, to make your team stronger from a maturity standpoint and just an understanding of, of, of what to do on the court in certain situations. Uh, uh, for Quentin Chivas, you know, being at Tennessee and being in, in this atmosphere before, uh, I think it showed last year. You know, that, that, and, and it helped calm a lot of our guys down in that Manhattan game and then to be able to go fight against Kentucky. And the same with Reggie Johnson and a few other guys we have. But, you know, again, I believe in developing young, young talent, but you have to have, you know, transfers in this day and age, you know, to help make your team strong mentally and physically. Let's go back to David. Has Q been all you had expected him to be when he arrived from, from Tennessee? Uh, he's actually been more than that. I mean, uh, to be one of the 10, 11 guys, maybe 12 in the country to come in and average a double-double, I mean, that, that's tough to do. You know, um, from a maturity standpoint, you know, he's, he's a very emotional guy. He, he plays with a lot of fire and emotion. And in my opinion, in today's society, that's one of the things wrong with the basketball. We got more young people that are willing to play cool than they are willing to go out and let it all hang out and, and, and do anything and fight for a win. Uh, he's done that, and he showed our, our young guys in our program that it's, it's okay to go out and play all out. It's okay to go out and show your emotion. It's cool to be emotional. It's cool to, to, to go do the things that you need to do to fight for a win. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, he's been everything that, that, that we've wanted and even more. Okay, go to Aaron. Norm Wood from the Daily Press and Newport News. You've got a roster that's got five or six seniors, I guess, or some of your top players, and mm -hmm. they've all, for the most part, won a game in this tournament. Um, does that provide a little extra confidence going into a game where you're obviously an enormous underdog? Well, I mean, it does. Uh, and, and the reason I'm saying is because if you've never experienced the NCAA tournament, from my experience in the three times that I've been here, that, that it can suck you up. And before you really get into preparing yourself for a game, you're preparing yourself for this atmosphere and everything that's around it. And I mean, that's from the phone calls, the ticket requests, to, you know, to all that. Uh, 
in the in my first two times, I felt like the Manhattan game was great for us because we got through the hoopla, and then we were able to kind of settle down a little bit and go prepare for Kentucky and, and, and fight as hard as we possibly could. Uh, this year, we were able to really prepare for Virginia. You know, they were able to tell the young guys, this is what's going to happen. This is where we're going to be when you come in the locker room. It's going to be a bunch of media there and blah, 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 blah. Watch what you say. You know, everything that 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 you have to coach them through. This year, we didn't have to coach them coach them through. And now we could just go out and pre prepare for Virginia. And, and, and hopefully that helps us play 10 times better than we did last year and give us an opportunity to come close to winning a ball game. Kip, Kip. Yeah, uh, Buck, uh, Kip Coons for the Rahway News and Observer. Was it an advantage then when you saw your name come up with Virginia that it was a recognizable team for your players and someone you were pretty familiar with just from, from the geography? <laughs> Can I tell you the truth? <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't. I mean, <laughs> nah, I was hoping we'd get somebody nobody heard of that we, <laughs> that we could, you know, get. But now, nah, honestly, uh, when, when it came to the point of seeing our name come up last year, it happened so fast. We did, I mean, the selection, our selection show was probably 20 minutes. Uh, we got in there, eight, looked at the TV, came on, and we, if you blink, you, it was already there. Uh, this year, that uh, uh, for them not putting us in there, and I think it was deservedly so, but um, it it shows the progress that we made over the year, and, and, ho and hopefully in the future we can continue to do good things and, and, and garner better seeds, but. Uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, when you get to this point, you're going to play who you're going to play, and you really have no say-so in that. But well, we don't have any say-so in that. So, you know, whoever it was, we would have been excited to play. And, you know, being that it's Virginia, uh, it, it has its, it, it, it's, it's, its good parts and its bad parts. you got to deal with a great team, but you're also in a situation where, I mean, how big is this for the state, for the people? It's a lot of people in the 757 that are Virginia people. You know, and they love the University of Virginia, but they've also embraced us, you know, for the things that we've been able to do for the last uh, year and a half or, or, the, or the last couple of years. That, uh, and, and, and for them to be able to see the, the two teams that they root for in one night is great. Uh, more for them than us, but, you know, it's great. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you all.
this one could be bad.
coming. It is what you're waiting on. How are you doing today? Is that far enough up? Can you see that one? We should be starting back up in three or four minutes here, just very quickly to go over things once again. The satellite coordinates for the press conferences, SES-3 slash K02B as in boy. That's SES-3 slash K02B as in boy. We'd like to remind you again, mobile device video recordings, including live streaming and Periscope of today's press conferences are not permitted. We'd also like you to please turn off your telephones. We'd like to remind you that flash photography is not permitted. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for us to get you a microphone. Once you have the microphone for today's press conferences, please give us your name and affiliation so we can learn who you are. Again, we should be starting with the uh, Texas Tech student athletes here in just a few minutes.
this time we'd like to go ahead and begin the Texas Tech portion of the press conferences. Are there any questions for the student athletes from Texas Tech? Can we get a mic up front here, Dan? Hi, Tom Shanahan from RedRaiderSports.com. Uh, could you guys talk about uh, Coach Tubby Smith and what he's meant to the program, and then you'd have a difference because one of you was already there when he came, and then the others, I assume, were recruited by Coach Smith. Just talk about his impact. Okay, if we could just start with Todrick. Um, his impact has been uh, so good to us. Like you said, I've uh, been on with the program for five years, so he's changed the whole program, and it's um, he teaches us life lessons. He teaches us things on the court, off the court. It's I mean, it's amazing to see a legend to come at Texas Tech and just uh, corral us up and get the right guys in and just uh, change the program around. So it's been a blessing to have him. Keenan, could you talk about that? Um, uh, it's been a blessing to have somebody like Coach Smith. Uh, unfortunately, last year, I mean, I've never been on a losing team, and last year we had a losing season. So it, it feels good to be able to have a great coaching staff and a great head coach to turn the program around and just teach us so much. Justin, is there anything to add? Oh uh, yeah, uh, just like Todrick and Keenan say, you know, it's been a blessing. Um, you know, he's had our backs through the ups and downs, and I just think, you know, just him recruiting the right guys to the program speaks, you know, of his character as a coach. Um, you know, on and off the court, you know, just a human being he is. He just recruits the right guys to get the job done, and you know, I think our success this season, you know, is a tribute to that. And I mean, I couldn't be any more proud of my teammates and the coaching staff and just what we've done this season. We're not done yet. Can we go back there? Thank you. Hey, guys. Rob Verby, Fox 34. Uh, since we saw you Sunday night, obviously you've had a chance to watch some film on Butler. What are your concerns, impressions on them? Todrick, could you start again? Um, they're a very great team. They're very experienced. Um, I actually played with one of the players, Kellen Dunham, at Philippines on a mission trip, so I know he, they can shoot it. Uh, the point guard, Roosevelt, is a – he can handle the ball, get to the lane whenever he wants. Uh, so we know we get, uh, we have a tough game in front of us, but I think we're prepared to play, and uh, we're all ready in the locker room. We're ready. Okay, I should reverse that. Justin, can you go next, please? Uh, yeah, you know, we watched a lot of film uh, preparing on the plays they run. Just like Todd said, they're a great shooting team, uh, very athletic. You know, as some people may not you know assume so, but they're a very athletic team. Uh, Roosevelt Jones is a great leader for them. Um, and you just, they just have really all the great assets, you know, for a great team. And we got to play a solid defense in order to get it done. Keenan, is there anything you can add? Uh, just at the end of the day, I mean, they're a great team. We just have to show up and be ready to play them. Other questions right there? Hey, guys, Adam Doyle from Texas Tech. You should know me by now. Um, Justin, what has Coach kind of been saying to you guys? He's, he's been through so many NCAA tournament appearances. You guys are doing this for the first time. What has been his message to you guys to kind of keep you grounded as you do this for the first time? Uh, his message has been pretty much, you know, validate the moment. Uh, you know, we're, we're here. You know, he always reiterates, you know, that we belong here. It's not, you know, just that we're lucky or, you know, the ball is just falling off side of the court the right way. He says we belong here and we deserve to play with the best because he believes, you know, we are one of the best teams in the country. So I think that just has to do with the confidence thing throughout the whole team. And, you know, he does a great job of that, you know, getting guys to believe in one another. And, you know, once you have a team that does that, you know, great things start happening. Can we go up front? Maddox, can you get up here? Krista Pertle with the AJ. Chadrick, what's the biggest lesson y'all took away from that TCU loss, and in what areas have you improved the most since then? Keenan, could you answer that first, please? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, just we have to show up and play every game. I mean, everybody, especially in the Big 12, I mean, everybody's a good team. And I mean, Butler's in the tournament, so they're going to be even better. So we have to show, show up and be ready to play and not just, like, come and BS with them. Justin, could you add anything? Uh, you know, just like Keenan said, you just we have to show up and just be ready to play. You know, we can't, you know, come out slow uh, or just, you know, assume things are just going to fall the right way for us. You know, we got to, you know, be aggressive, be the aggressor, and be on the attack mode and just make things happen. Todrick? Uh, I think we have to play each game like it's our last. Like, uh, we didn't come out with energy. We, each game we have to come out with energy and just 
play to our abilities because we can't take games off and days off and practice or the games or it shows like it did against TCU. So we learned a lot from that, got a lot of rest, and um, we're, I think we're very prepared for this one. So I think we're ready. So. Any other questions for the student? Net? Can we get Aaron right there? Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. This is for Justin. You guys were down in Puerto Rico with with Butler. You didn't play him, but you were. Did you cross paths with them much at all? Did is there any extra familiarity from being in that tournament setting with them, even if you didn't play them? Um, we saw them uh, just maybe a few for a few minutes when we first got there. Uh, we got to the arena early and they were playing, so we know we got to see them just a little bit. Uh, but I mean, other than that, we haven't really, you know, seen what they have until we watched film yesterday, uh, for sure. But uh, while we're in Puerto Rico, I mean, obviously it's the same thing that we've been seeing on film. They're a great shooting team, well-coached team. Uh, you know, they get out and transition very well and look to spot up for three. So we just have to, you know, play solid defense and get out on the shooters. Can we go to Kip back there, Dan, right behind you, Dan? Uh, yeah, uh, Keenan, uh, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. If you had to target one area mostly responsible for the turnaround at Texas Tech this year, what would you say it was? Uh, I'd have to say we just, I mean, everybody just believes. I just feel like last year um, everybody wanted to play, and they, they, we wanted to win, but I just felt like everybody didn't believe in what we could do. And this year everybody believes in one another, and we just play for one another and just play hard together and believe we can win. Right back up front here. Todrick, what's the key to really balancing the emotion of this is the first time in a while Texas Tech has been here to we need to act like we've done this before so we can get this win tomorrow? Um, I think uh, just staying focused. Coach has been telling us to stay focused and practice. And it's, it's about the uh, team that's going to get hot at this time. Uh, I feel like we got hot before, and uh, if we get hot, we can make a big run in the tournament. And it's just all about focus because uh, the games are back-to-back, -back and you have to get ready for each scouting report. So, uh just focusing in and locking in, and I think we'll be all right. Any other questions? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow. And let's see, Coach Smith is due at 105.
We're now ready to continue the Texas Tech press conference. We have with us head coach Tubby Smith. Coach, at this time, could you please make an opening statement? Well, first, I just want to um, certainly thank the selection committee. We're really excited to be a part of this tournament. Um, one of the greatest athletic events in, in sports. Um, and so it's, um, it's good to be back in it again. Um, uh, with the with Texas Tech Red Raiders. Okay, do we have any co questions for Coach Smith? Can we just start in the middle there? <laughs> Come on, Adam. <laughs> Coach Adam Doyle with Texas Tech. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, shocker. <laughs> Uh, Coach, what, what is your message with so much experience that you've had in this tournament and your players having none of that experience? What has been your message to this team, whether it's to keep them grounded mm -hmm. or just to tell them what to expect as they step on that court for the first time? Well, first you lead by example. You know, I think they really, hopefully they see that in preparing, whether it was the first game of the year or the last game of the year, whether we're preparing for TCU or Arkansas Little Rock or South Dakota State, and now we're preparing for Butler. You know, I think continuity and consistency is a key. Uh, so, um, you know, and then let them know that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity, a great opportunity for them to um, uh, project um, the, you know, the, represent the university the right way, represent themselves, and, and compete. Everybody. And so they all know that we're going to compete every day in practice. And, um, and the intensity level now has to uh, be enhanced. And that's something that I, we've tried to create in the, in the practices since the, since the build, Big 12, since our last game. Um, and, and just to um, enjoy the journey. You know, we try to, even though we want to be serious-minded, but we still want to uh, enjoy this experience. Let's go way in the back, and then Daniel, if you can get Kip. CL Brown over here, Tubby. Good CL. <laughs> CL Brown, ESPN.com. At what point did you feel like, or could you tell that you guys were turning a corner? I know you lost some close games uh, in Big 12 play, mm -hmm. uh, but at, at what point did you feel like you guys got it and were on that roll? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it was any point in time. I was very. Uh, confident that we had a, a good team and we were playing against some some good teams as you, as our record as our schedule indicates we, we have one of the toughest schedules in the country and I knew the competition we were playing against I mentioned South Dakota State and High Point University you know teams that won their league Arkansas Little Rock and you know just around Hawaii uh, and, but I knew that the Big 12 was a different you know different level and so we needed to increase our intensity. And then you have things that happen throughout the course of the season that, that might, whether it's within the team, you know, players that you have to work with on and off the court. But I thought the, um, you know, the, the win, you know, against a Richmond team, I thought the, um, you know, really played Kansas tough at home. Um, Played them tough on the road. We um, we had a good run. Uh, you know, we went through some tough losses, but the overtime win against against Oklahoma State at home was huge. We were huge. We were behind, uh, but I saw a level of, of confidence. You know, felt like we had beat at home. Uh, that's when we turned the corner. And then we went on the road and beat Baylor. Uh, uh, that was those were huge uh, moments for our, our players. Let's get Kip over here, and then we'll. Yeah, uh, Tubby, uh, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Or I'm sorry, okay. Kip. Okay, Kip, how you doing? Fine, thanks. I was wondering which element of your career speaks more or are you prouder of in terms of a legacy, that you won a national championship or that you took five schools to the NCAA tournament, an accomplishment only one other coach can, can share? Well, all those um, uh, are good, and, uh, and, and they are – those certainly weren't, you know, everybody want to be the best they can be. But I, just the sheer joy of seeing players, you know, develop, get their degree. Uh, but you ask me which one of those, I would, 
you know, you know, I'd like to be able to stay one place and say, hey, I wish we'd done it at one. But it's, again, every job we made, we took, it was a step in the right direction. And um, we've certainly moved our family quite a bit. And I tell young men, young young coaches, when they're going to be, uh, be sure you have a good, a good wife, <laughs> a good family back, you know, that's, that's supportive of you. And so uh, my wife Donna has been very, you know, just her appreciation of, and the sacrifices that she's made and the family's made moving around. But five teams is, is um, and, and, and Lon Kruger is a great, great friend of mine and, and, a, and a great coach, um, a colleague. So to, to do it, be able to do that tells me that we, we have a, a, um, a philosophy, you know, that, that we've done things the right way because people weren't going to hire you they're not going to hire you unless you were successful, you know, at the prior at the prior uh, university. So I'm really really pleased about that. You know, it's not to take anything away from a national championship, but I'm really honored to be able to serve all those great institutions: Tulsa, Georgia, Kentucky, Minnesota, and now Texas Tech. Okay, let's get Aaron here, and then we'll work our way up here, Dan. Aaron Beard with the Associated Press in Raleigh, right here. Uh, sort of following up on that, you talked about telling the guys to enjoy the moment. Is it is there a different enjoyment you have with the tournament now that it's been as many times as you've been, as many different places? Um, is it and is it any different when you've been at a school that hasn't been in nine years? Well, it's it's a difference when you're at a school like like Texas Tech that has struggled for for so many years to get back to to the NCAA. Uh, and it's a real sat gratification and satisfaction, and and just the community, um, in Lubbock, West Texas, the excitement surrounding uh, the program, and and um, and that's really appreciated. Pre we appreciate it because our guys are deserving of that. They really have made a lot of sacrifices to stick it out. You know, guys like Todrick Gocher, who's in his fifth year there. You know, I'm his fourth coach. Uh, Guys like Aaron Ross, who's gone through two knee, knee surgeries, and then the, the young men that were um, that trusted, you know, us that hey, coach, we believe you're gonna, you know, we want to help you turn this program around. Um, so that's the, uh, you know, the satisfaction and the grat you know, and, and we're grateful that you get this opportunity because, you know, we did get fired at our last job. And I'm really grateful that Kirby Holcutt, our athletic director, and Kent Hass, and, and now um, the Duncan, our, our chancellor and our president, you know, called me one the day after I was fired. So I, I appreciate that. And so I really, again, that's, that's why we're so, uh, uh, that's why we're enjoying it, this opportunity, because it was, um, it is, a, it is a gift, it is a privilege uh, to be able to coach and, and, um, and do something that I've loved doing for so many years. So uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you. Let's go up front, Daniel, and then we'll go right there. Tom Shanahan, Red Raider Sports com. Coach, can you comment about opening the season against your alma mater and then being basically back in the same area for the NCAA tournament? Well, I'm, I'm really impressed with Scott Cherry and the job he's done at, at my alma mater at High Point, the Purple Panthers, um, and um, Dr. Quibain, Nito Quibain, who I went to college with, who's, our, who's the president there, has done a fantastic job in, in growing that program. Uh, and to have, again, I mentioned, it was a great opportunity for our team because they gave us all we wanted in our first game at home. I'm not sure we should have scheduled them, but because uh, it, it, we, we had a tough time winning that game. And but again, I said we were measuring ourselves against the best, and that's the way we try to schedule. Uh, but it's good to be back in this region, uh, having coached at Hope County in Rayford, North Carolina, played in the Raleigh Times Dispatch tournament years ago, and uh, played against Raleigh Inlow, who is it? Uh, Raleigh Broughton and Kerry. Check the records. We went, we went, we went seven overtimes and lost to Raleigh Inlow in the championship game in Raleigh Times. So it's, it's good to be back here and a lot of friends 
and relatives that, that live in this area. I met my wife at High Point. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a special moment, a special time to, to be back in, in North Carolina and especially in this area, coaching and, and bringing the Red Raiders back here and, and bringing my wife and family back here too. Let's go right there. Yeah, Coach, uh, David Woods from the Indianapolis Star. Uh, Butler has transitioned from a, from a mid-major league to a, to a power conference. And you, you've coached at the, at the mid-major level and the power conference level. They're really two different kind of pressures. I guess if you had any advice for Coach Holtman, uh, what would you say? I mean, Butler fans are used to 16-2 mm -hmm. and two league records, and it was arduous this year just to get 10-8. and eight. Well, you know, it's everybody – Again, that's what success will do. Sometimes it will breed um, you know, people think it just happens. It's not easy. And now they're in a tougher conference. Uh, obviously, it's pretty obvious that Coach Holtman and staff have done a, a fantastic job. I mean, you can look at the teams that were in the, they're in the tournament now. They were in one of the tougher leagues in the in, in basketball leagues in the country. Uh, so, uh, and for them to to achieve what they've achieved is just, and do it so consistently um, over the years. Again, we were at Tulsa, and, and you know, Butler's had good basketball tradition over the years, and, um, uh, you know, and basketball in Indiana is a, is a way of life, much like it is in, in Kentucky and other places. So um, to do it under the, um, you know, under the, as you mentioned, I don't know if it's pressure, because I'm sure that um, the pressure they feel is what they're um, is inward. By that I mean the team. You know they have goals just like we had goals. We um, and every every coaching staff and every team. You know I don't know if it's pressure, but they want to be the best. And I'm really impressed with with the team and the players that he's recruited year in and year out. Um, their execution has been has been great. Um, so no, I, I think people better be very happy and very pleased with uh, with the consistency and the continuity that they have uh, at Butler and the job that, that Coach Holtzman and his staff are doing. Let's go here in the middle. Brian Haney, Texas Tech Sports Network. Coach, on those same lines, can you speak to some of the Butler personnel and what concerns you the most? about their ability to score the ball and everything they bring to the table? Well, you have to start with their personnel. Uh, Kellen Dunham is just an outstanding scorer, an outstanding player, multi-talented. You know, we try to recruit uh, Kellen Martin out of Louisville. You know, went in his home, and when I was at Minnesota, we were, we were, I thought he was, uh, you know, I knew he'd be an ex outstanding player, and certainly he's, He's shown that. I guess he's, you know, the balance that they have in their lineup. And when you have a player like Roosevelt Jones who's, who's willing to just be the distributor and, and have the toughness that they, and lead the way he does. Uh, and, they, you know, they're such an outstanding shooting team, especially from the three-point line. They're just, and their balance in their lineup um, creates real, you know, they know how to find the mismatches, take advantage of those mismatches. Um, uh, you know, I love their, you know, execution and their spacing. Again, it's um, well coached. Again, in a lot of areas, they put a lot of points on the board because they're very efficient. You know, they take, you know, they take care of the basketball. The things we have to do is, is, is sustain our defense because, you know, they're going to, um, you know, they don't make many mistakes. So we've got to be very conscious of, um, of their outside shooting. Uh, take you know, try to take that away from the best we can, uh, and and then we've got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. And and any any time you get to this level and you get the tournament, you've got to defend and rebound the ball. So those are things I think you have to do in in any game in order to to win and compete. Okay, coach. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, let's see, the UVA press conference should start at 
the easiest thing to do, slide through here.
We are now ready to begin the student-athlete portion of the UVA press conference. I'd like to remind you once again, uh, mobile device video recordings, including live streaming and Periscope of today's press conferences, are not permitted. We also do not allow flash photography. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll go ahead and get you a microphone. Once you have the microphone, please identify yourself and your affiliate today. So we'll open up the floor. Can we go ahead and right there, Eric, on the... Uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. For all you guys, you've had a chance now to, uh, I assume, study some film. What can you tell us about your opponent? What's a scouting report? What do they do well? Anthony, could you start, please? Um, they're a fast-paced team. They like to get up and down the court, um, get a lot of quick shots up. Uh, and then they crash the glass offensively, and we're going to have to be ready for that. You know, we'll have to be ready from the start as far as um, getting back in transition defense and trying to, trying to get quick stops. Malcolm? Uh, I echo the same point. They, uh, they like to get up and down. They like to shoot a lot, um, play fast pace. Um, so we're going to you know, try to slow them down a little bit with our pack line and get back in transition. London, is there anything to add? Uh, yeah, defensively, they uh, switch up their uh, defenses, man, press, zone. Uh, so we've been uh, getting ready for all of those. So. Can we just go right across the aisle there? Did, did you have a question? Norm Wood, Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. When you guys look at the roster, around, or if it was apparent when you watched them on video, there's, you guys have a significant height advantage over these guys. It's not something you see in the ACC, obviously, but do they compare at all to anybody that you remember playing during the course of your career? And what kind of challenges does a, does a smaller team like that present? We know what the advantages are. London, could you start, please? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know of a comparison, um, but they do have a, the four guard lineup. Uh, Chivas is a, a guard, basically playing the four man. Um, but um, with, with that small guard, with that small lineup, uh, we're trying to go inside with the uh, AG, Isaiah, and Toby, and trying to take advantage of that as best we can. Malcolm, could you please comment? Um, I agree. Uh, you know, we're going to try to take advantage inside because um, that's where our uh, you know, that's where we can benefit the most. If we can get layups, we can get easy buckets, get their bigs in foul trouble. So that's what we'll do. Anthony? Um, I agree with everything they just said. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other questions for the student athletes? Can we get Kip back there on the aisle? Yeah, uh, Malcolm, uh, Kip Coons from the Raleigh News and Observer. When you guys saw not only that you were a one seed, but coming to Raleigh, did you feel that your season was validated, or were you surprised by you know the the one seed this year? Um, it was it was a pleasant surprise for us. Um, you know we we played hard this season. I think we had a very good regular season, but that doesn't mean you uh, deserve a one seed. We were thankful for the opportunity, um, and you know we're going to try to take advantage of it as best as we can. Let's go over here on the side. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anthony, uh, I'm wondering if you, or maybe any of you guys, have seen the video of Hampton's coach celebrating at the end of that uh, at the MEAC title game. And I'm wondering the closest Coach Bennett has ever gotten to any kind of emotion, any somewhat resembling that. Um, I've never seen him jump up and down on the sidelines like that before. But in the locker room, he does kind of get a little little dance step to him. You know, every now and then when we get a big win, um, he does the same dance um, every single time. But you know, that's just Coach Bennett. You know, his his um, his style is a little different than you know. He has a little bit of old old school in him. Um, so you know, his dance moves are a little old school. But that's about it. Can we go right behind you, Eric, and then we'll go right in front of you. Todd Divas from the Washington Times. Has, for all you guys, has there been a time in your basketball lives where you were the underdog and pulled a big upset? And if so, what were the circumstances of that? Anthony, could you start, please? Um, I think a lot, in a lot of ways, UVA is an underdog. And in, in a lot of things, that we, we have that underdog mentality going into every single game. You know, a couple years back when nobody expected us to do anything in the NCAA tournament and we made it to the Sweet 16. Um, when we won the ACC championship that same year. I think, in a way, uh, we were underdogs in, in that kind of atmosphere um, because nobody really expected anything from us, especially when we took a loss that year uh, to Tennessee by almost 40 points. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that w in that way, we, we kind of experienced the underdog kind of mentality there. 
Malcolm, do you have an underdog story? Um, I do not. I can just echo the same point. We have a we're a program that prides ourselves on being underdogs. We are, uh, you know, we we uh, and we embrace it. We embrace the the role of being the underdog, whether or not people see us as the better team or the team that should be beat. Um, we go in there and we have a chip on our shoulder every game. London, do you have anything to add? No, I think they got it. Okay, Mike, did you have a question? Can we go right to Mike there? Um, I'm curious with the seed disparity, and obviously you guys are the favorite. You've had a tendency to get off to slow starts this year. Uh, is that something you've discussed as being extra important to not kind of give a team like this hope early on? Uh, let's see, London, could you start, please? Um, I think I think as of late we've been uh, starting off pretty strong. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping we uh, put that in the past um, and just trying to get, trying to move forward and keep and keep starting the games off strong, um, especially after the last two tournaments. Um, our first games we kind of started off slow, uh, but we have a lot of experience and we're trying to learn from those two experiences and uh, and trying to get better. Malcolm, um, I agree with him. You know we uh, <laughs> we gotta you know we gotta we gotta stay focused. We gotta make sure we don't get off to a slow start. I think we've learned from that in the past, whether it's been um, at the beginning of this season or, you know, in past tournaments. Um, getting off to a slow start ends up hurting us at the end of the game um, That in games that we lose by two or three points. So, um, you know, it's very important for us right now because it's do or die. Anthony? Um, agreed. Okay, can we go right back there? Oh, this is for London. Uh, Mark Wicker from the Los Angeles Daily News. Uh, can you go back to when you first went all the way across the country to, to Charlottesville and yeah. end up, you know, taking over as a point guard. And, and looking back at that guy then, um, you know, how much gumption and, and uh, you know, bravado did it take yeah. to do uh, that? It, it's been a crazy experience uh, coming all the way across the country, uh, leaving everything I had and just going out and taking a leap of faith. And um, But this is what I wanted to do, to be in these situations. And that's why I came to University of Virginia, to be able to to play in games like this and to be able to play for a team like this. And um, I, I, when I came to Virginia, I really just wanted to come in and play some minutes just to help the team win. And then I ended up getting a, b a bigger role and then just been running with it and trying to take a, just trying to take the best or have the best experience with the team. And um, and, and then now I'm here. So it's, it was a big leap of faith, but it's been working out well for me. Okay, let's go back to Kip on the aisle and then we'll get Ron and then Doug. Yeah, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, Malcolm, uh, this week, uh, so far, two first-team All-America recognitions for you. What, not from a personal standpoint, but what does this mean to the program that players playing in your style of basketball can win uh, that kind of honor? Um, I, I think it's huge. Um, first, I think it's a testament to my coaches, to my teammates. Um, we all celebrate things like that, individual accolades. Um, but I think it's huge. I think a lot of people, you know, criticize the program, criticize our style of play, and criticize Coach Bennett for how we play. And you know, we're very methodical. We play a slower-paced game. Um, but you know, this this system can produce very good players. It can, um, you know, create guys that are, you know, as good or better than than you know guys at other schools that people you know really look up to or win a lot of games. So um, you know, I think it's I think it's huge for the program. Um, and I think it's huge for, you know, guys in high school looking, choosing what college they want to play at. Um, because you can come to University of Virginia and, um, you know, turn into a really good player. Ron, do you have a question? Ron Morris from the News Observer in Raleigh. Anthony, how much, when you get a scouting report on, on your next opponent, how much of a statistical analysis do you get nowadays? And and what do you look for in the, in the statistics? Um, the main thing I look for is uh, the rebounding category um, because I'm a, a big guy down low. And if, it, if there's a big that averages a lot of offensive rebounds, I know I had to really focus in on him and try to keep him off the glass because if he does get a lot of offensive rebounds, that creates a lot of opportunities for their offense to score. Um, you know, and uh, the next thing I look at is um, their block shots. You know, if they have a shot blocker on the team, uh, I just got to be aware of that and, and and remember where he is on the court every time I get ready to shoot the ball. Um, other than that, you know, I kind I I think the coaches do a really good job of uh, giving us the the gist of how the players play, and and we kind of go from there. And how detailed are 
are the stats that you get? Um, they're pretty detailed. You know, we get a, a sheet of saying what each player can do and and um, and what what their percentages are from everywhere on the court and everything like that. So they're pretty detailed. Doug, do you have a question? Right yeah, Anthony. By by now, you probably heard or been made aware of the fact that a, a 16 seed has never beaten a number one in this tournament. How do you process that information? Um, you know, it's that's a crazy stat, you know, and it, it's something that we can't take for granted at all um, because, you know, if, we, if you guys remember in Coastal Carolina game when we were the number one seed and they were the number 16, it was a really close game for a minute. And uh, they, they really gave us a run for our money. Uh, so we have to be ready from the start. You know, it's just something that we can't take any team lightly, you know, because that team is just as hungry as we are to, to try to win the national championship or try to go as far as we are. Right behind you there on the edge. Malcolm, you addressed this a little bit on the individual question, but do you get the feeling sometimes that uh, because of the style you guys play and, and, and you know, your coach has designed that you almost have to apologize for the way you play despite how successful you've been? Uh, not really. Um, we're, we're not apologetic in the way we play. We take pride in the way we play. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good in how we play, and it, I think that, you know, results in wins. And, you know, as long as we're winning and as long as we stay true to our identity and who we are and our character, then we don't really apologize to uh, naysayers. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, Coach Bennett should be here momentarily. We are now ready to begin Coach Bennett's press conference. He's just going to open it up for questions right away. And can we get a microphone right up front here? 
Ava Wallace from the Washington Post. Um, Tony, all of the senior guys have talked about how the non-basketball component of kind of the game was important in their choosing Virginia, either a connection with you or the values of the program. How important was it for that class uh, that you've referred to as kind of the builders and the foundation of what you've been growing to be of a like mind or have those shared values? Yeah, I think it was essential. Uh, all those guys, uh, what they represented. Um, when you're building a program, uh, you're going to go through, we've talked about this before, uh, a lot of adversity, a lot of hard times. And then even when you have success, they're still there and um, you have to handle different things. But you need the kind of guys that you can go through adversity with. And we've talked about that before, that you can lose with first before you win. Uh, I'll never forget, I've said it before, my father at his press conference when he took the Washington State job, he said, first I have to recruit a group of young men I can lose with first before I win. And it sounds strange, but a lot of times when I'm watching players, uh, watch them play and I ask myself that question, can I lose with Malcolm Brogdon? And I sometimes even look up in the stands, I always try to see their parents or who's watching them and say, are these the kind of people that I can lose with, that I can go through hard times with, that they'll stick with it. And then they'll learn from that wisdom that they'll receive and apply it and eventually become successful. And, and I think that's significant in building a program. And, and all of those guys have had their shares of, of ups lately, but they've also had their shares of downs. And they've just stayed true to, to that kind of character, um, that kind of commitment to what matters. That's the character-based um, kind of model that we try to get. And, and that's kind of where it starts, as awkward as that sounds or as strange as that sounds. Can you go through adversity with them? And, and they have that. But um, they value the whole experience. Uh, you know, Virginia is a unique place in terms of the academic expectations, what's required, um, what we're trying to do in a league that was special, the ACC, and, and build it. And I think they were excited about that opportunity to come and maybe make Virginia relevant and try to be really good basketball-wise, but setting themselves up with an education that'll last. Yep. Let's get CL. I won't back. answer that long for all the questions, I promise. <laughs> C.L. Brown, ESPN.com. Tony, um, two years ago, you guys came in here as a number one seed. In what ways do you see the program being different and this particular team being maybe more equipped to handle everything that comes with that? Yeah, I'm not totally sure. I, one thing, um, Mike Toby was on my radio show a couple weeks back, and they asked him what's changed from your first year to your last year. And he said, well, our first year we were – watching ESPN wondering, are we in, are we out, are we a bubble team? And he said, now this year it's like, well, are we going to be a two seed or a one seed, which kind of shows you where the programs come, and this is the second time that, that he's been in that. Uh, there's no substitute for experience. I've mentioned this before. Because we, we've lost some tough ones early, we haven't been able to live off of our success as we had in the past, kind of winning the conference and then winning the uh, conference tournament. You know, we came up short in both, had successful years. I think that's really taught us how, how close to the line it is. And um, I just think we're healthy right now. And the guys, you know, we've played some tough games and certainly respect Hampton and knowing that you've got to be right in this thing to, to advance. And so I think our guys understand that. But just um, they've had such good careers. They really have. And, and this is the last piece of it. Um, no guarantees, but that they can, you know, want to do well and finish it off the right way because they've really built something special. Regardless of how this plays out, it can't be taken away what they've established for Virginia basketball. Ron, do you have a question? Uh, Tony, how much uh, – do you have someone on your staff who handles uh, statistical analysis? And how detailed are your scouting reports now? And how much has that changed since you first got into business? No, we, it has changed a lot um, since I've gotten in the business. But, um, yeah, we, we do. I'm, I know what, what I, I look at quality. Like, I'm, I'm more into I just kind of maybe a little more old school, but we certainly rely on it. Everybody's using synergy. Everybody's looking at, you know, points per possession and how many times this team does that or this player goes to the low post, pick and rolls, pick and, set, pick and pops. So you use all that stuff. And I, I think we use video in creative ways, but um, that's an important part of the game. Um, but I think we have a pretty good balance. Uh, I'd say I'm, I listen to it, I look at it, but I, I still like watching things, and I'm more about are we getting quality shots on offense? Are we making the opponent shoot contested shots, whether they go in or not? And so sometimes that, that doesn't add up on statistical categories. So I just I look at that. I don't know if that's what you're getting at, but we definitely use it. And um, a couple of our guys are really looking into it, a couple of our video coordinators and things like that. The statistics or 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of our staff does. Um, there's not one guy who's our statistics guy. I mean, we've got a couple of our assistant video coordinator and then, you know, our recruiting coordinator who are working on stuff. And you use Ken Palm. You use different – there's so many different things you use. But you look at them for – just to see if there's any tendencies. We have our own things we stat that matter to us that probably wouldn't matter to other teams that I look at and say, all right, what's our percentages on these things that I value? And that's – I kind of use those. Okay, David, we've got a question right up here on the side. Coach, how you doing? Uh, I read a quote from your dad a couple of years ago about the 2000 team that went to the Final Four that maybe he got a little too intense on them once they got to no, the Final Four. No, not my dad. <laughs> intense? Come on. Is there anything you can take from that in a NCAA tournament situation to not put too much yeah. pressure on the guys? Well, he got him to the Final Four, didn't he? So I think he did okay. Um, he was intense. You have to be who you are. I, I think you, you rely on your experience. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Um, I think I heard Bill Self, uh, they interviewed him at the selection show and what makes for a team that's ready and to make a run. And he said, got to be healthy. Your best players have to play well. He said, um, of course, you got to be prepared. He said, you got to make some shots. He talked about that. And he said, you got to play. You got to be freed up to play. You got to be ready and focused, but you have to be freed up to play. And I, I just think there's a balance. And um, you can overanalyze things, but, um, you know, we know how – quickly this thing can end and we know how good who we're playing is and you just battle it possession by possession with the right mindset and I don't think you change a whole lot from what you're doing in the season but um but our guys understand the significance of things okay, coach we got Dave down the middle there hey Tony Dave Johnson from Dave. the Daily Press I was wondering if you could comment on what you've seen of Hampton's transition game and in particular, um, Reggie Johnson. Terrific. Um, you know, statistically speaking, you know, they're averaging around almost 90 possessions a game, which is, that's, that's impressive. Um, they get up and down the floor fast. And then even when you're back in set, they have um, shot makers. They're older than us. Their top six players are all seniors or transfers. One of our players played with um, Quentin at Tennessee, Darius Thompson. And, um, you know, they have, their, their perimeter guys are good, but Reggie is playing at a, high level because he can he can manufacture his own shot he's real strong you know you look at him on tape and you see that you see how physical he is gets his shot off quick gets to the rim pretty complete so um but he's not the only one so again they like to get it up they have playmaking ability and you have to be back and, and make them earn that's kind of what we try to do all the time against the guys in our league like him and he's he's got some special abilities and you know he's been through a lot Okay, can we go to Kip up here a little bit, Eric? Tony, uh, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Can you tell me in what ways has Malcolm Brogdon improved and expanded his game for you, the, especially the last three years since his, since his injury year, yep. and, and how that maybe validates your program and that people look for gaudier stats? I think um, – it's well. Anytime a guy gets injured and has to sit out, he he talks about that. It made him appreciate the game. It's it's humbling. It gives you a, a perspective that you don't take things for granted. So from that standpoint, that's been significant. I've heard Malcolm say that many times, and he's he's lived that out. But rarely do you see a player of his ability uh, in their last year and his fifth year improve as much as he did. I mean, he already was a first team All ACC player, efficient, good stats. But he's really gotten better this year with his movement without the ball. Of course, his, his leadership I've seen off the court, on the court, but verbal leadership and in practice. Um, but guarding the ball, uh, rebounding, even if they don't show statistically, he's just he's learned to let the game come more and be um, be even more efficient. And I just I, I'm I didn't know he'd be able to make that kind of jump um, in his game, being as experienced as he was. So I I just think he he understands and and knows what's going on and. Um, He's developed. He's a guy that works. He's really driven. I've coached a lot of guys. He's one of the top two or three I've ever seen that is um, driven to make his, makes his game better in the off season and during the season, what he works on, what he thinks about, how he approaches it. And that's uh, impressive. And then you take into account what he's doing academically, getting his master's in public policy and the things that he's about there. That, that just adds to it. So I, I think that's the the stuff that has impressed me about him, you're right, his, his progression every year, and especially this last year. Right there, Tom. Todd Divers from the Washington Times. Do you reference the Coastal Carolina game anymore, or is that something that's so far behind this group that 
it doesn't have any impact on what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, I mean that. Look, we played Coastal Carolina and Belmont. Now we play Hampton. That, you got to play. These teams can play, and and I think that's the experience. You got to know just because we're a higher seed and they're a lower seed that throw that stuff out. All the seeding is is a it's a reward for having a really good for us a, a really good season and a good conference season, conference tournament finishing second, and then. Now it's about playing, and the way college basketball is this year with the balance, um, it's there. So, yeah, we, we know we're going to have to play. And just I was talking about Hampton's ability and their veteran experience and the fact that they won a game last year in the tournament. This isn't new to them. So it's about playing at a, a high level for the majority of the possessions throughout the game. Coach, we're back here on all right. Uh, Mark Wicker, Los Angeles Daily News. Just wanted to ask you to go back to when London first yeah. got there. And in those practices or going into that first year, when did you realize that, that he could handle that as a freshman running this team? And, and then what it's been like since? Yeah, London, um, he, he uh, you know, when I saw him and we recruited him play in the summer with his AAU team, you know, just, you saw something in him. It's just his feel, uh, his IQ. He's a, he's a neck up player, as we like to say. But um, he was really good in practices and, um, he injured his shoulder. We thought he was going to be done for the year. We thought he had separated his shoulder. It was a real bad injury. Justin Anderson, I remember, fell on him, swelled up. And so he was out for about two or three weeks. And I remember how it all of a sudden changed the dynamics of our team. It, we just we, we were laboring in the practices. It was before our first games, actually. But we didn't look the same at all. And, um, and it was him. I mean, he just stirred the pot. He just he, he made everything kind of work out. He got guys the ball. He understood it. Plus, he shot the ball well. And he had a decent knowledge of the defense. And then when he got back and uh, got more experience, it just it took our team, I think, to another level. So pretty early on, he just kind of had it in terms of that moxie and that feel that you want your point guard to have. And um, you know, in this year, I think he's taken a step. He's become um, more assertive and looking for his shot when it's there. And he understands what needs to be done. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you Thanks. very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the next press conference will be North Carolina at 345.